South Africa experiences one of the highest motor vehicle theft and hijacking rates in the world. In the quarterly crime statistics for the period of the 1st of April 2023 to 30th of June 2023, the South African Police Service noted that 5,488 cars were hijacked over the three-month period. What is the situation at present? Now, what new methods are criminals using and how does this impact our insurance claims? Tonight, we seek to get the answers to these questions with our various guests. Bahai Tudumalang, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we talk about the continuing occurrence of uh, vehicle-related crimes and the various ways that these impact us. So, you know, we start by getting a clearer picture with, uh, in terms of the numbers with Soli Mulai, who is the Chief Director for Social Statistics, uh, Stats SA, uh, so that we can understand where the country stands with this crime at present. Mr. Mulai, thanks very much. Good evening. Welcome to Soweto today. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, good, good evening and good evening to the viewer. Much appreciated. Uh, you know, uh, before we just uh, get into, you know, the issue itself, maybe let's talk numbers now. What are the latest statistics around vehicle related crimes in the country? I mean, I've been looking at the figures of what we are losing as a country. Really staggering numbers there. Yeah, no, thank you so much. So as you've already explained in your introduction, so from Statistics South Africa, what we are doing is that we are collecting information from the household in terms of um, crime. What else police, it's more of reported crime. So the numbers that you have explained, they are coming from the police in terms of reported crime. So the survey that we released this year which looks at the victims of crime. When you look at the thefts of motor vehicle, we're sitting around 200,000 households that indicated that they actually have um, experienced the theft of motor vehicle. So motor vehicle, in this case, it's when, for example, you wake up and then you find your car is not, is not, um, is not around. So these are, these are the numbers in terms of the household, in terms of experience crime. And then if you look at the hijacking, which is, I think, what most colleagues are actually, or most South Africans are actually experiencing. So hijacking is sitting at also at the very high numbers, if you look at it um, over time. But if you look at the current point that we have releasing, about 114,000 South Africans indicated that they've actually experienced hijacking. And Remember, hijacking also goes with you losing your car, obviously. Then when we look at the numbers, we also see that it's actually one of the crimes that is highly reported at the police. So I think that's the reason why when you look at the, uh, the police crime states, you see that actually it's one of the crime categories that is increasing. So that's the numbers in terms of looking at the household level and also looking at the individual levels in terms of the thefts of motor vehicle and also hijacking. Mm. I mean, according to stats, uh, you know, which vehicle related crimes are we seeing uh, occurring uh, the most hijackings or just a straight uh, theft without a person being there? I mean, I'm looking at some of the models, you know, in terms of the cars that are being stolen. Uh, it looks like 43.9%, I'm not sure how accurate are these numbers, but uh, just other vehicles. But you look at other brands that are usually, uh, you know, the ones that uh, are falling prey to these criminals. Yeah, so I think in terms of the brand, that, that's the figures that you'll get from the police um, when the victim is reporting, because you have to give the details of your car and also, and also for insurance claims also. So. From the survey side, we don't necessarily have information regarding the type of cars that South Africans have lost. But um, like I said, from the subs uh, data, that's where you actually get the details in terms of even the time when this was even OK. Mm. So we generally believe that uh, during the festive season, you know, um, we are more likely to see an increase in crimes of theft and especially vehicles, as this is the time where people uh, I must say they have money because, you know, uh, people would have uh, gotten the 13th check and other things and are buying more things, including new cars. Do the numbers reflect this belief or is there another time or season where specifically vehicle related crimes are more prevalent? So from the data that we are collecting, we're seeing a peak during 
winter season. So between June and July, that's when you start seeing a, a spike. And this is not only for thefts of motor vehicles, it's even for other crimes like your house breaking, your home robberies. We normally see it during the winter and also during the December season, as you have already mentioned. So those are the um, the peaks that we are actually experiencing um, over time because the survey we've been running it for almost for the past seven years or so. So when you're overlaying over the time, you could see that actually it's during that, you know, um, peaks. But what we also picked up now recently, especially now with the low, low shading, we're seeing that the peak is quite high compared to the previous years. So when we didn't have a lot of it, um, low shading, there were peaks, but they were not that high. And now we're seeing a spike in during, obviously, um, it's winter and also with a high level of uh, low shading also. That's also one of the things that we picked up from the survey. Mm. Just before I let you go, I mean, what is the current situation in Houghton province at present? And how does this compare, you know, with the rest of the country? Yes. So Houghton, so all the big metros, if I may put it that way, um, you know, KZN in Devon, your um, Western Cape, your city of Cape Town, and also Houghton as a whole, that's where we're seeing a lot of um, this type of crimes. Uh, compared to the other provinces. Yes, in other provinces like your Eastern Cape, where you see it in, in um, East London, and also in P, um, when you go to uh, the, the, the PE site, then that's where you also, but your rural areas, um, unfortunately, that's where we're seeing, a, not a, we don't see a spike of this type of crime, but we're seeing different type of crimes. Uh, so in an urban area setting, that's where you're seeing this type of crimes that are happening, yes. Mm. Samuel, thanks very much uh, for taking the time and joining us uh, this evening just to give us an insight on the numbers, particularly on this uh, you know, very concerning issue. Much appreciated for coming. Thank you. Solim Mulaide, who is the Chief Director for Social Statistics at StatsSA, unpacking the vehicle-related crime figures for us. Let's take a quick ad break. On the other side, uh, we speak uh, with the spokesperson for South African Police Service to take us through some of the current operations in place to fighting these crimes. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now, before the ad break, we spoke to the Chief Director for Social Statistics at Statistics South Africa, Solimulai, on the current stats on vehicle-related crimes. Now we continue the conversation with Captain Jeff Porter, who is the Head of Corporate Communications for Johannesburg Police, just to get a sense of understanding of what is currently being done and how we as citizens can be more vigilant towards crime. Uh, Captain Pora, thanks very much for taking the time. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tibos. Uh, uh, let me greet your viewers as well at home. Much appreciated. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to vehicle-related crimes, I mean, uh, you know, we have that belief that time is of the essence you know, if uh, you lose a car. So normally we know that criminals, they move quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, they would strip the car and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you, you know, do you, I, I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, when it comes to the police, how successful are you in making sure that you get to maybe, um, you know, where the car has been tracked um, in a fast pace, if I may put it that way? Okay. Um on that one, uh, remember, we, we work hand in glove with the likes of Tracker or these various um, tricky devices companies, uh, which they assist a lot in terms of, even, even our flying squad vehicles, remember, we are, they are also fitted with um, equipment or technologies that can pick up if a vehicle has been stolen or not. If maybe a Tracker is repeating, we are able to pick, pick that up through uh, especially our hyper, highway patrol and flying squad, like I'm saying. Um, so once we pick that up, um, if it's near, up, it depends on the distance sometimes, but remember we are all over. Um, we, we use our radios to communicate, we use cell phones to communicate so that we can get quicker to the actual uh, scene of crime or where maybe the vehicle has been located or maybe it's repeating. Yes. I mean, these days it looks like, uh, you know, criminals are getting tech savvy. Uh, they, they, they become very quick to adapt to new technologies, if I may put it that way. Um, how, normally the method that they use, you would hear someone saying that 
we, we saw the tracker now, but it has disappeared. Normally, what happens in that instant? Look, um, we, 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 we've got a problem of colleagues that are, are colluding with uh, criminals. Even in the private sector, it's the same thing whereby you find that some are former district in devices company employees, some are still working there. And if they start to collude with criminals and, and spill information on where trackers are being put, how are they being put, you know, how to remove them and so on, then it, it makes our job a bit difficult uh, when you are dealing with such rotten apples. So it, this, this is why it is very important to, to deal with such, you know, or such colleagues so that we, we, we expel them from the system or we get rid of them from the system. Mm. You know? mm. Let's now talk about your operations that are currently in place to help, you know, prevent uh, and decrease the occurrence of um, vehicle related crimes. How helpful are they? I mean, I know that uh, you've got operations sometimes. Mm. You join in in the Okai Mulao, you know, mm. Sasela, there's mm. quite a lot of them. Mm. Um, uh, how effective are they and how helpful are they in making sure that you actually nip this issue in the bud? Uh, let, let me start by indicating that, uh, remember Okaimula or Idama province, it was a pilot project. And the way it was successful, even the minister um, opted to adopt it. Uh, he now calls it Shanela. It's a national project now. It has went countrywide. So such operations, um, really, I can tell you most of the time when we're doing our Shanela operation or previously known as Okaimula, uh, we, we never picked up uh, less than uh, two cars in that which is a, it's a good success. Uh, if you get three, two cars in an operation, you must know that the operation was very successful. Because remember, uh, criminals also are, are very slippery. They're very tricky. Uh, it's not easy to, you know, sometimes they temper with the engines and whatnot. So you need to take your time on a car, actually, to, to figure out that this vehicle um, was stolen or maybe has a case number on it. Uh, but w when we are using our VIS unit, which is the vehicle identification unit, uh, normally we bring them. Those are specialists in terms of mm -hmm. assisting us uh, recovering vehicles. We normally uh, bring them on board when we have these huge operations like Chanel, and they assist us a lot. That's how uh, most of the time we recover this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Some of them, because we take them by surprise, you find that it's a Thursday morning, uh, we started at half past five, they just drive into us. And then we, we apprehend these perpetrators or uh, these criminals. Mm. Mm. Uh, some of the hotspots in, in, in Johannesburg in general, I mean, people mm. would want to know mm. where should I be careful? I know you need to be careful everywhere. everywhere yeah. But uh, obviously there are hotspots mm. and mm. there are also cars that are targeted. I mean, mm. when I spoke to Statistics, Statistics SA, mm. we touched on some of the... Uh, vehicles that are, you know, on high rotation. Mm. Um, you know, mm. they did not, I mean, just... Um, get mm. into the issue mm. itself mm. but we know that uh, there's certain models that are yeah. in high rotation and normally mm. uh, on those hotspots they will be taken mm. no look um, uh, lately uh, I, I can or oh, in the past three months let's say Rodoport is one of those er those areas that would uh, encourage our citizens to be very vigilant when driving around Rodoport there's been a, a little bit of an increase in terms of vehicles that have been stolen or hijacked around um, a road port in, in Johannesburg. So uh, definitely it's a hot spot. Um, even though we're putting efforts, in, this is why most of our operations now, we're moving them to the likes of road port because we've noticed that uh, around the Wahani Jews or road port at large, um, we've got a problem in terms of uh, those cars that have been targeted. You, you know that lately your SUVs, you know, uh, mostly I target. But criminals, um, once they, well, sometimes you find that you're driving your Uno, but maybe you're a rich person, you're trying to disguise. Once they pick up that you're rich, maybe they've been following you from a bank or something, uh, you, you'll also become a target. So I would, I would encourage our citizens just to be vigilant, uh, look after themselves, stop parking in isolated areas. You know, especially men. Men, they go to these places whereby ladies of the night, uh, and then the next thing, mm -hmm. they come and report hijack cases, which is very dangerous because we end up charging them with perjury, uh, which is, means um, lying under oath. Yeah, so they must shy away or from, from uh, behaving like that, especially our male uh, counterparts. I mean, in, in brief, before I let you go, um, mm. what is it that we need, as individuals, need to look for, uh, you know, just to safeguard ourselves when we are driving on the roads, mm. when we are parking at various shopping centers, mm. and also just generally, you know, when you travel maybe out of the province? Mm. Look, um, 
most of the time they, they, they would follow you. So you, you, you need to be vigilant. Uh, your mirrors are very important. Check the vehicles. If a vehicle has been following you for some time and you realize that hey, these people, I don't know them, these are strangers, they look suspicious. They be, um, you can stop at the nearest garage. Uh, if there's a police station near, public places uh, are, the fa are the safest. Don't just stop anywhere or try to conf confront them. Stop at the garage or a public place whereby you'll be able to make calls or WhatsApp next of kin or the police. You know, we've got the My Subs app that you can WhatsApp us if you, you feel that making a call may, might make them suspicious. Uh, we respond to, to such information on our social platforms, you know. Captain Porter, thanks very much for taking the time. I'm much appreciated. It's a pleasure, sir. Much appreciated. That was uh, the head of corporate communication for Johannesburg Police, Captain Jeff Porter, just giving us uh, the police aspect on the issue of vehicle related crimes. Let's park it there for now. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, we talk about the impact that uh, vehicle related crimes have on insurance claims. So, it today continues after this. Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We continue the conversation on vehicle-related crimes. Now, criminals are getting increasingly tax-savvy, and this has an impact on our insurance claims. Now, to just give us a sense of uh, you know how these things have unfolded in uh, recent months, joining us in studio via Zoom is Sandru Heiser, who is the Managing Director of Integrity Show Brokers, to discuss this more in detail. Sandri, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us tonight. Good evening. Evening, Zabu. Much appreciated. Yes, so... Yeah. Yeah, no, so, so I mean, just linking towards the previous speakers as well, we, we see a similar trend in the insurance industry with regards to vehicle thefts. Obviously, we focus more on the police stats uh, because for uh, insurance claim to be paid, the, the case needs to be reported to the police, you know, and losing up to 60 vehicles a day uh, being stolen in South Africa, that's quite a significant amount, you know. And then earlier uh, hearing that up to 200 households, 200,000 households are affected by this. It's severe numbers we are talking about. And I can concur from an insurance point of view, we also see the same happening in those three province, provinces mentioned earlier, Gauteng, KZN and the Western Cape. Uh, are the hotspot. They're also the most densely populated, but they seem to be the hotspots at the moment. Mm. I mean, Sandro, many people think that, uh, you know, having a car with the latest high-end security features protects them, but this is not necessarily the case, as car thieves have become increasingly tech-savvy. Maybe can you elaborate on some of the criminal techniques, you know, that are being used uh, these days? Absolutely. Um, you know, those very systems that's installed in vehicles to make our lives easier and the vehicles more secure is now being used against you to gain access to the vehicles. And I think the most two relevant examples I can probably talk about is the, the one that's most prevalent in South Africa at the moment, uh, where they use the keyless entry system of the vehicle and they use a system called relay hacking where they intercept the signal from your key. Um, and then a second person that stands next to your vehicle then unlocks and starts the vehicle without breaking a, wind, a, a side glass or windscreen or without, you know, cutting any wires in the vehicle. And they basically drive off the vehicle as if the key was in the vehicle. So that is probably the most prevalent one in South Africa. And then as technology also advances, you could, you could actually be in a situation where uh, if a vehicle has full autonomous braking, you can get a vehicle to stop without you know being in an accident and thereby also hijacking a vehicle like that now we haven't seen many of those examples but it's practically possible you know to use an autonomous braking vehicle to stop a vehicle and then hijack it but the the relay hacking is is the biggie at the moment uh, it's used extensively it happens on a daily basis um and and it's very prevalent uh, throughout south africa Mm. I mean, insurers now have identified several vehicles as common targets for this type of crime. And to counteract, uh, you know, the increased losses on especially high-end vehicles, some insurers have stipulated that motorists should install up to two insurer-approved tracking devices as an additional safety measure. We're seeing it uh, quite happening often, uh, you know, or with quite a lot of people telling us that, look, I, I'm having two, at least two or three trackers uh, in my car for safety purposes. Maybe can you please just explain this for us? Sure, yes. So that trend started in, in about mid-2022 when the insurers identified that, you know, there's about a list 
of vehicle that's high risk. And we're talking about high end vehicles here, you know, vehicles costing well in excess of a million rand, double cab SUVs, luxury sedans, et cetera, et cetera, typically equipped with these um, technologies that we were talking about earlier. And uh, that resulted in a 71 to 75 percent increase in the average claims cost of a stolen vehicle. So in the past where that could have been a uh, hundred thousand grand claim, all of a sudden that has jumped to average of 175,000 grand per claim now. So they've identified this trend and to mitigate the risk, they had to uh, look for alternatives. And some of the alternatives on the table was either to, re to increase the cost. And if you increase the cost, only the consumer can pay that. And I, I mean, we didn't get 75% increases on our insurance. So they, there was other mitigating factors that at play there. They could increase the rates, they could uh, increase the excesses. But the, the one they agreed on most was to say, you know, if we can get tracking devices in and we can at least recover the vehicle or recover the vehicle in certain instances, at least there will be some form of salvage that we can offset against the cost. Because remember, insurance is pulling gather the money of the many to pay the claims of the few. So the more claims they are and the more expensive they are, the generally more expensive insurance will become for the consumer. Um, and thereby the insurer said, okay, you know, if, if we do install these insurer approved tracking devices, and some of them, as you rightfully said, require up to two tracking devices, then that will obviously limit the risk and will mitigate it to a certain extent. And then what they did to compensate for, for the extra uh, um, cost that the consumer is uh, paying is, Many of them then also said, we're willing to give you a premium discount if you put it in. However, if you do not put it in, they might exclude theft cover from your vehicle. So if your vehicle is stolen and you did not install the uh, insurer approved tracking devices as was required, you may not have cover in that scenario. So it's, uh, it's best to speak to your broker to make sure that you are adequately covered when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, uh, Sandru, in the interest of time, what should policyholders ensure is in place in order to avoid any potential claims from being rejected and and what would uh, you know what could the increase in theft you know of high end value vehicles uh, you know have direct impact on the future affordability of car insurance in the country because obviously uh, people are complaining now that ins insurance is you know uh, prices are just outrageous absolutely everything is going up so you know how can you protect yourself um, obviously, there's physical measures that you can take. Uh, you know, some dealers can actually deactivate the keyless entry system on your vehicle, which will make it more difficult for criminals to get hold of the vehicle. You could install uh, third-party anti-theft systems. Some of them are more advanced than others. Uh, even gear rocks are making a comeback at the moment. Uh, tracking devices, as we explored earlier, and then remember when we talk about tracking devices, you get traditional tracking devices and you get more advanced, you know, uh, tracking devices that works with satellite and has early warning systems, et cetera, et cetera. Secure parking is always, uh, you know, prevalent. So make sure you, you park your vehicle in a secure area. If you have a garage behind locks, you know, put it in a locked garage instead of outside on the pavement. Um, and then also speak to your broker or your insurance agent about the options available and the cover uh, for your vehicle and, and particularly the theft cover and hijacking component of it. With regards to your, your second part of the question, uh, you know, we need a collaborative effort from the vehicle manufacturers, the insurance industry, police and the consumer to solve this problem. Uh, it will not be solved by the police only. We need the buy-in of all the role players and stakeholders involved, to, you know, to successfully tackle this problem so that vehicle insurance can remain for, affordable for the average South African. Sandru uh, Giza, thanks, uh, Geyser, thanks very much uh, for taking the time and joining us uh, this evening. Much appreciated. Always a pleasure having you. Just welcome. That was the Managing Director of Integri Show Brokers, Sandru Geyser, closing off our conversation on vehicle-related crimes and the impact these have on our insurance uh, claims. A big thank you to also my guests uh, for coming through. That's uh, Soli Mulai from Status A, as well as Captain Jeff Porter, who also joined us tonight to share some light on these crimes and how we can protect ourselves uh, better. And just a quick stats there. We know that um, a staggering, uh, you know, 8.5 billion worth of vehicles are stolen and hijacked in the country annually. So the majority of these, almost 30% are taken across border 
to neighboring countries where syndicates are making huge profits and South Africans are footing the bill. We hope that uh, this, uh, you know, uh, the law enforcement will nip this issue uh, in the bud. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Today. You can call or WhatsApp us at 081 8857. Now, from myself, Tabu Melokwani, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.